data interpretation in medical schools. What should you expect? How much data should you use? By the end of this video, you'll be an expert in answering data interpretation questions. Hi, I'm Shivam and I'm a third year medical student. I've coached over 500 interview students at MedicMind with over 2000 hours of experience. My students hate data interpretation and it's a topic that a lot of students struggle with, particularly graphs. If you want to watch more videos on medicine interviews like this, please subscribe and hit the like button. Also in the comments, let me know your best tips for data interpretation questions to help your peers as well. So here is a station that we gave our medical students. This is a real life question that was given in a medical school interview. Pause the video now and have a go at this station. And later on, I'll show you a mark scheme um, written by a real examiner. Hi there, so welcome to station 13, which is on data interpretation. So um, have you had a read of the scenario? Yeah, I've just had a quick there. Okay, brilliant. So we, we're doing glucose tolerance tests. So a patient will come in, we'll give them a sugary food, and we we'll monitor how their glucose levels change across a few hours. So um, first of all, can you describe the trend you see in the graph you've been given? Um, so what I see over here is that there's an initial rise in glucose levels in both the diabetic and the healthy patient. Mm -hmm. But for the healthy patient, around 50 minutes after taking the glucose load, uh, the levels start dropping again in yeah. the body. Uh, whereas for the diabetic patient, I think this carries on about, about up to 100 minutes or so, yeah. uh, which when then it starts dropping, so about the double the amount of time. Okay. So for any question like this, you have to state the obvious facts in front of you. So make sure to explain what the graph is actually showing. For example, the glucose concentration and the minutes from the start of the test. Now, the interviewer helped by introducing the graph a bit, but if the interviewer doesn't do this, make sure that you introduce the graph yourself. One thing that this student does really well is they described the obvious trend in front of them. And they also compared the healthy and the diabetic um, trend rather than kind of describing both of them individually. One more thing that they do very well is they actually quote something specific from the graph that they can see in front of them. So again, try to talk about particular facts and figures. Any other changes, any differences between the healthy and diabetes? Oh, yeah, also one more thing. Um, so the healthy patient, his glucose concentration to begin with is a lot lower than the diabetic patient. So the diabetic patient starts with eight millimoles per litre, whereas the healthy patient starts with around four. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. Something the candidate does really well here is they spot the initial concentration. Um, this is something that you need to discuss and talk about, even though it's a very simple point. Now, one thing the student hasn't done in this situation is fall into the trap. And that trap is actually starting to describe and then explain what this graph is showing. For the moment, he's just described what the graph is showing. So, so we've got the healthy patient uh, sees a, a falling glucose earlier and there's a lower initial concentration. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay, so can you explain why the glucose levels will fall after a while? Sure, um, so when you have like some sugary food or something, um, it results in an increase in glucose mm -hmm. in the body. Um, and this is sensed by the body, especially in the pancreas, mm -hmm. which releases insulin. Okay. Um, this acts on the increased glucose levels to convert it into glycogen, okay. uh, which is stored in the liver. Okay, brilliant. Um, and this patient, in fact, has type 1 diabetes. Yeah. Can you explain the mechanism behind that? Okay, so type 1 diabetes is essentially an autoimmune attack, so the body attacks itself. So it's destruction of the insulin producing cells in the pancreas. So therefore like the insulin is just not produced as quickly mm -hmm. when the food is eaten. And that's explaining the fall in the graph. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So this is quite a technical question that they're asking you and is a, a question that is unlikely to come up in an MMI station and is more of an Oxbridge type of question. However, they do answer it in quite a clear and concise way. So overall, this is a fantastic performance by the student here. They were very clear, they described the graph well and also they had good scientific knowledge as well. Um, I don't think there's anything that they can improve in this answer. Um, and they, one thing to note is to make sure that you talk about the increased um, level of glucose straight after the meal so really emphasize that to the interviewer if there's anything you want to emphasize to the interviewer just make sure that you're discussing it to the interviewer with more um, more clarity and perhaps that more that extra emphasis on it as well now let's look at another example hi there welcome to station 13 of this MMI I assume you've read the information on the graph and could you describe to me the trend that you see uh, yeah sure um, so I can see that it falls earlier in the healthier patient um, so because the insulin doesn't work in the diabetic patient 
Um, okay. And yeah, so probably before halfway. So. Before, could you be a bit more specific than um, that? Uh, just uh, before 50 minutes from starting, so it shows. Uh, okay. Sorry, after 50 minutes, uh, it sure. starts to decrease. So. Sure, okay. So before I was asking you to describe the trend, now I'd, li I'd like you to explain the mechanism which causes the glucose levels that are falling in this healthy patient. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, an increase in glucose means obviously that uh, there's more insulin um, present. Um, present, okay. Yeah, uh, and um, obviously this doesn't happen for a diabetic patient because uh, they have problems producing the insulin. Okay, so this candidate is being very non-specific. They're using quite ambiguous terms and they're not relating specifically to the graph or any trends shown in the graph. Um, one thing I would say is to just take a bit of time and maybe take one second or two seconds just to compose yourself before answering a question like this. Rather than saying it falls earlier, she should have said glucose concentrations fall earlier. Um, so try and be quite specific with your terms. So with regards to data interpretation questions, you might ask yourself why are they even asking these questions in the first place? Well, actually, the reason why they're asking you this is because, say, for example, you're a doctor on a ward and you are calling up another doctor that's in another part of the hospital and you need to describe something to them, then it's really important to be concise and clear in what you're talking about. So that's why data interpretation questions come up so often in MMI stations. Potentially questions like this might lead to further follow-up questions, maybe about your work experience, maybe about public health type questions. So just be prepared to answer any type of follow-up question that they ask you. So here's a mark scheme. Please feel free to pause the video and assess how well you've done. So in conclusion, with data interpretation questions, make sure you give the most simple points right at the beginning before moving on to the more complicated answers. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. See you next time. Thanks for watching this video. Click below to subscribe and catch more of our videos. To watch our full online course and find out how you can enrol onto our award-winning program with personalized one-to-one -one tutoring, online weekly webinars and more, click here.